Okay, hello and welcome back to Zoink TV, I'm Andrew Weir, and I've passed 500 subscribers on my channel, so I thank everyone that subscribed and stuck with me for a long time. Um, and I always think of how to thank 500 people, and I can't really think of a good way. Uh, but what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to mention just a quick, really useful thing about normals, so um, that should help you out in the future. And I'm going to keep uh, doing little videos like this where I do something small, that will help you out. For instance, I did the or origin stuff in the previous one of these videos, and I'm just looking for more reasons just to keep you uh, interested because I, well, I want to help everyone out. Um, and so I'm going to make a few of these little videos just to, you know, teach you some more obscure things about Blender. And so normals, they're not exactly obscure, but if you haven't seen them before, then a normal, if we go to this cube, appears on the shape in edit mode. So if I get this shape and I bring up our side menu by pressing N uh, or clicking the plus which you just saw up here somewhere uh, but press N and that will appear and then scroll down go to mesh display I close everything else apart from mesh display. Uh, we've got mesh display there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the normal section. So that's uh, it's got the size and this, these two parts here. There are vertex normals and face normals. I've never actually used or looked at vertex normals, although I know uh, I know they exist, but I have no idea what they do that's too specific. Um, but they should probably be facing outwards, and so should the uh, definitely the face normals. So we can see them there. If we can't see them very well, we can change the size of the normals. Uh, so now they're very clear, but obviously if we had more faces, that length will be quite distracting. Uh, but we can see they're definitely all facing outwards, which I think if I render this, I mean obviously it'll be normal, but the same if I select one face, and just check which way we're viewing this, if I select one face, press space, and search flip normals, that'll flip all the normals which I've got selected uh, just with the faces. So we can see that this one is now on the inside. If I go inside this cube, we can see it's facing inwards. Um, and I render this now. Yeah, it's still normal. Um, but if I had a texture on this shape, or if I was in a game engine, this shape, this uh, this cube here with this face will actually be invisible, so it'll be see-through, even though it exists in the 3D view and that can cause some problems so obviously if, uh, if you've got a thin shape or if you've made a model and there's a gap in the model and someone goes inside that gap in a game let's say then everything you could see on the outside would be invisible from the inside so if you ever glitched a game and you've gone through a wall or something or you've gone through the floor and you look upwards and you can just see through everything but only partly um, you should know what I'm about but that's due to the normals facing towards you when you're actually playing it properly rather than going through them and uh, looking upwards and you're seeing the other side of the normals. Um, I could try and texture this. I've no, I haven't actually text, uh, tested this out. But if I did give this a cloud texture, then we should see in the render, nah, it's acting all normal, um, which it should do, I guess, in the animation area. But it's something to look out in a game engine. And also, a more important thing that normals would affect is if I take this into smooth shading, I'm sure many of you experienced this, or you will do eventually, um, and I flip the normal here, which we can see all the normals outwards. If I flip this single normal on smooth shading, then we can see we get a black area. And when, when we've got more advanced models, then we get these little black areas or it looks silver around the edges or whatever it is um, and it, it appears darker and it definitely stands out and we render this and you know it's not looking very good that could actually be the inside you know it's, it's all it's all wrong and that's because of the normals so you're going to want to fix that by flipping the normal again so selecting the face flip the normal and there we go, our smooth shading is back how we wanted it. Um, so I thought that was quite useful whenever I when, when I found that out. 
Uh, on the more advanced model, for instance, if I can find my uh, my shirt dot blend, I think that if I put smooth shading here, yeah, I've got a glitch there. See that? That's the kind of uh, problem we're looking at. And I would go into this. I would see that I think it's badly modeled. See, we've got uh, loads of faces, kind of um, a bit wrong there. But I'm going to go into the normals and see which way they're facing. And there should be one facing the wrong way, but I'm not too sure which one it is. So, if we grab that and I flip it, let's see what kind of result we get. Um, it's definitely changed, uh, but I don't think I've got the right one there. I hope you're getting the point. I could try and fix this. Again, it's badly modelled, it's got double faces. Um, so I'm not going to bother deleting them, but I'm going to see if I can fix the normals. And I think I did actually fix it, now that's just a double face problem or whatever. Um, but that's the kind of thing you're looking at in smooth shading. We'll get a problem there. I, I come to subdivide this. Um, and it still exists. So I'll go to subdivision and we still get the black area there. That's just a bad normals and bad modeling uh, by my part. Um, and so that's kind of what I want to mention about normals and I wanted to kind of mention where the channel's going next. Uh, I'm going to do some more advanced character creation uh, and some more basic character creation going over my previous tutorials as well as doing a little bit more uh, on the basic tutorials. I'm going to do an animation tutorial. Um, and I, I just hope you keep subscribed. You can always post in the comments. I only get like one or two a week. So I can easily reply to them. They appear straight to my email here. And so I thank everyone that's subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.